<laughs> so I also see that you went and trademarked Queen of the Six. What are your yeah. thoughts on those who disagree with this move? I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. We're Brooklyn at! We're Brooklyn at! We're Brooklyn at! We're Brooklyn at! We gonna do it like this! This is WorldwideEntertainmentTV.com's official Toronto rappers and hip hop documentary series. You know I got you. You know I got you. Got you. So I see that you had a video, um, I Got You, um, which there was there was actual scenes that were in Falstaff. I used to work in Falstaff Community Center. Um, I used to will reside sometimes in the 30 building and stuff like that so mm-hmm. i know how fall staff be getting down so mm-hmm. uh, for those who don't know um can you ex- just give a little background as into you know you being a part of the fall staff family and what it meant to you to go back to shoot there well growing up like that was where i was like born and raised in fall staff a lot of people don't know that people that don't know like i've been born and raised there um, right before high school, I ended up moving from uh, that hood. But um, I have so much memories there. Like back in the days when I used to live there, we're talking about like the 90s and stuff. Like it used to be crazy over there, like in, in Jada Paul's stuff. It's not as bad now. But before it was a really like tough neighborhood, like growing up in, you know, a lot of, you know, violence, a lot of like everything, you name it, goes around Jane and Falstaff. It's not one of the best hoods, you know, but um, it really like made me who I am. Like I'm really rooted from Jane and Falstaff. So I always just like to like incorporate, like I never forget where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? So me doing the music video with Julie Black and then being able to go back to my old hood and be like, you know, it was it was really embracing. I seen kids that were like maybe 13, 14 years old. They knew who I was and they're like, yo, it's Paris. She's shooting music. Yo, yo, can we be in your, can we be in your music video? I'm like, don't worry. Don't worry. Just DM me. I got you guys next time. You know, it was, it's nice. It's nice knowing that I can go back and people are like, yo, you're from Jada Falls F. Wow. Like, you know, and embrace with the people there, especially the kids. It's a good feeling, you know? So you really know about two, three, four. When when you say two, three, four, everybody knows that famous tree that you guys had. I used to go to Fals- like I said, the the tree that everybody used to hang out at. Um, Falstaff was a, I loved it when Gucci used to him and his bro used to throw those little. <laughs> yeah, do you remember when they used to throw those little barbecues and give back to the community and stuff like that? That's what a lot of people don't know that a lot of guys that grew up there or came around and what whatever would give back to the community a lot of times like they yeah. they pay homage so um that's definitely things i'm looking to in my near future like you know like giving back to the community and if, even if it's not just my community any any community just help communities in general it's just a good look overall you know yeah that's a fact so mm-hmm. speaking about i got you you were able to um do a song with one of the legendaries um in the game one of the most iconic people um women i would say besides Michini and that that yes. came in in toronto and in, in you know what i mean in canada to represent not only for the females but the black um mm-hmm. you know what i mean that was I feel like that that shit is crazy. So mm-hmm. coming from the Jane Strip to collaborate with you, could you tell us? Can you tell us how that came about and how was the experience being with Julie back? Like, how was the environment and the vibe? She is, a, she's just an entire vibe. Like in general, like she is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Like energy, like like I can't even describe it. Like she's just so spiritually like connected like you could just feel her energy when she walks in the room it's like just silence it's just like oh julie's here (laughs) it's like you know like the queen's here we gotta everybody hail to the queen like she is the queen like literally she is the queen and she's so down to earth she's so chill she's she's just a vibe like the best like this is the my most favorite song i've ever made in my entire life like it doesn't matter like what other song like this is me speaking my truth and like working and connecting on this record with her just really brought out like the feeling of what I was trying to interpret and like give out more. Like I remember we connected in the studio and she was like, and I played it for her. She's like, okay, okay, okay. She's like, what do you feel? Like, you know, she's asking me questions. Like, how do I feel like when I listen to the song? 
And I tell her, you know, like, she's like, well, how do you want to feel? You want to bring it to church? I'm like, yeah, I want to bring it to church. I want you to light up this room. Turn the lights low, turn the lights low. It takes a single notch to rid a room of darkness. Light up this room. This night is about collaboration and celebration, not competition. So let's lift up the lights. Lift up the lights. And I want everyone to activate their inner child right now and sing this after me. Here it comes. This little light of mine. What? I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Sing! I'm gonna let it shine. Hey! This little light of mine. What? like this is this is spiritual stuff like this is this is this is me telling my story this is you know um this is this is this is me telling my story so she's just like okay sis i got you i got you and then we're like that's it i got you i got you sis i got you you know what it just all came so natural it just literally was like meant to be it was like just meant to be i can't even explain it it's just Something that just had to happen. I got you. We're saying, I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that. I got you. I got you. Sis, you know I got you. And it just was like, okay, this is perfect. This is the hook. This is it. I got you. And then we just kind of like, you know, worked with it from there, and then so on and so forth. She was so amazing to work with. She made me cry in the studio, girl. <laughs> I was crying tears. Like, it's like <laughs> one moment she was like. And towards the end, she's like, you know, queen, you know, I got you. And then when, I, I don't know if you noticed, towards the end of the song, when she's like a bridge, she says my name in it. She's like, Paris, you'll never lose. When she hit that, I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to lose. I really believe I'm never going to lose. If Julie's telling me I will never lose. Spread your wings and fly. I will never lose. Like I have the OG, the queen telling me, you know, believing in me. So it was, it was the best, the best, best collab ever. No matter what other people think, that's my favorite that's, collab I've ever done. That's like, like I said, Julie, Julie Black is a legend in, in Canada. Right. And yeah. uh, it's like I said, besides her and Mishimi, like those are two ladies that. Oh, shout out Mishimi. I love Mishimi. That has She's an amazing. I love her. I love you. She is sweet as pie. Like I was just with her in the studio. In the studio, working, sitting beside the queen, Miss ba, ba, ba. Me in the P fountain, P Big Canada. Yeah, here Ra, you go. Yeah. Oh, the other day, that I love my, that that that's that's my mom, y'all. I love. I love. <laughs> Her energy, I love her vibe. I love everything. She's about a vibe. Her. She's. She she's reminds me. Vibe. She reminds me of MC Light and Yo Yo. Their yeah. vibe, their energy. They're all they're from that era, you know. Yeah, I love like when I see her. Foxy. That's who I see. Yo Yo Fox. That's who I see, and her everything about her, her swag, everything is just Missy. Yeah, yeah I mean, Missy she will just, take me to church. She's... Julie, Julie's like the, you know, God fearing when he forgot. Yes, yeah, like why yeah, you... yeah, for me, yeah, yeah. Yes, I love that. Oh um, so, God, how we, so um, how did you come up with the concept for the video? Was it both? Uh, was it both of you guys, or was it like a team effort? How did you come up with it? It was my my idea. I'm actually really hands on with all my videos, not just like that one. All my videos, I come up with the concepts myself. I come up with everything like myself. I do have like, of course, a um, a director. That, that I work with to like bring the visuals to life but I always come up with the ideas I'm very hands-on I write on a notepad okay feelings how do I feel oh this makes me feel upbeat or this thing makes me feel sad or down and then I try to incorporate it and then look for like places that can like bring out the feeling so when, when, I, when I think of that song I think tears I think you know like pain tears rain so I was like I gotta get rain let me check the forecast where can I find some rain when is it going to rain? Let me make sure I go film when it's raining. Then I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. Because my video guy is not going to be available these times. So I found and search, search till I finally found a studio that had its own rain machine. Sick. So that's how I was able to get the rain in the video. And then, I'll, and then the hard part was like, okay, is Julie going to come through? You know, she's big time. Like, she is like, you know, like, 
Star Walk of Fame, Mrs. Julie Black. Like, does she have time for little old me to do a video? And I, I was scared to ask her. And she was like, yeah. She's like, what? We need to do a video for this. Are you crazy? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is literally the best day of my life. Like literally. And she came again. This was probably like my second time meeting her after the second for the video shoot, even though we met like two times prior to that. And, and we had lots of conversations on the phone. But the second time she came in that day of the video shoot, I was like walking on eggshells. Like I was just so nervous. I was like, I can't fuck this up. I gotta, I gotta do this one good. Like, you know, and then she made me feel so relaxed, so chill. And I was just like, wow, like everything came out smooth. My video man, like helped out with the positionings for the rain. The rain came out beautiful. Like it's memories. Like I'll never forget such, such, such an amazing day. Just like for doing those scenes, the other scenes I came up with myself, like the church. So it's kind of like saying my testimony. That was what I was trying to like give, you know, like I'm speaking my testimony there, you know, speaking my truth. And then the other side in fall staff. So it's like, kind of like the girl growing up of fall staff, then, you, you know, the tears, the pain, the water, and then the church, the church, like speaking my truth, speaking my testimony, whether people want to judge me or not, like, I'm going to speak how I feel, you know, type of thing. And, oh, and then towards the end, yeah, I show like my plaque. I, I forgot I show my plaque to show that like, I either win or I learn, but I will never lose, you know, spread that message. Like you can't lose. You always learn and you keep, keep pushing until you win. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Just positivity. <laughs> Sorry if I'm rambling. No, it's so okay. Get, like, you know, like no. deep into it. It's but... For those who haven't seen, if, if they haven't seen the video, that's a perfect vision for them to put it to together. Yeah. If you're seeing it. I'm picturing false staff. I'm picturing rain. I'm picturing and seeing you and Julie box. Like it was, a. am I'm, I'm going to admit it was a nice video. I liked it. I liked the concept of it, everything. And the fact that you had Julie black on it, put a, you know, icing right on there. the cake, the cherry, yeah, it was like an extra cherry right there. Cause it was just like, not a lot of people nowadays, a lot of artists don't try to touch on those type of emotions. It's more trap or it's more hood or it's more. You don't know, get me wrong. I do that. I do all. No, of I know. That. But I the, the fact that you're much of that, I have to no, I'm saying that you're versatile, you know? you're showing your versatility, showing people that, yeah, I could talk about whatever, but at the end of the day, I can tap into my emotions and I'm not afraid to do it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a big thing. Cause a lot of, a lot of people try to go in the same Avenue, like for mm -hmm. a long, long time, that Avenue can only take you so far. Even with DMX, DMX tapped into, he talked about bitches, but at the same time, he had a lot of slip and falling, can't get up. Like, you feel me? He had songs like that, that people could relate. Yeah. You feel me? Um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm, I, I like the fact that you're versatile. So speaking oh, of- I also, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No problem. I forgot to say one more thing. So I'm so used to doing the trap, the upbeat, like, you know, the club records, but I have to shout out Dub J, my producer Dub J, because he's the reason that he even like, you know, I have one, two records like that, but I wouldn't really like put it out there. It's more like personal to me. But he was like, no, you got to do one of the records on your album has to be deep. It can't just all be fast, you know? And I'm just like, okay, don't worry. And then I had to really like, you know, come outside the box and do something that I wasn't used to, which is really speaking my, uh, what would I say? Like things that, kind of I would be ashamed of not that I'm ashamed but maybe ashamed to tell strangers like opening up on personal topics right because you know people you know people are people they judge they'll be like oh you know she had a son at a young age or oh like whatever you know like oh her body's fake or whatever they want to judge a person on right mm -hmm. so it was just tough for me to you know go outside the box like be intimate like be you know like i said speak my truth yeah so <laughs> yeah yep. listen anytime you speak your truth that's that's what it is a lot of people like like the messy shit right that's what makes the clips yeah <laughs> real, true shit they they try to bypass that but mm -hmm. um my next question is you're a bit different than some of the current Toronto artists. Um, you reach back for legends in the city. Are there any other legends in the city that you would like to work with besides um, Mrs. Julie Black? Yes. Of course, me, she, me. <laughs> she's goaded, like she's the queen. <laughs>
a little bit of an old school. And the vibe that we had here a long time ago. So a lot of you may know my name and a lot of you may not know my name. But the reason I'm out here is to let you know a little bit about myself and where I'm from. Y'all got a lot of energy still up here on Western Road. I just want you to know and be an OG in Toronto, representing Toronto. I am you. I would have been one of you guys here at the Rec Center and at all the programs. At Martha E. The way we grew up in the Rec, rec Center right in the middle, we used to start breakdancing when breakdancing was brand new. The only insight we had in hip hop was Beat Street. And we took a whole bus like us and went downtown and watched Beat Street. And from that, we became a Toronto rap scene. And I go by the name of MC Mishy Me. I. Might, there might be something on the way with me, she, me. There might be, you know what I'm saying? Let me just put that out there. Um, and I like Melanie Durant, too. Nikki, Nikki Minaj and Lil' Kim. Who would you pick between those two? That's to be Kim. That's to be Kim. Okay. She's the originator. <laughs> I agree. She set, she set the tone. I agree. Right? right? And that's the thing. People the... Keep, keep emulating her, her pictures, her style, her everything. You know what I mean? It just keeps coming back. And it's like, wow. I would love to do a record with Melanie Durant. Those two legends, like, and of course, Cardinal. I would do it with Cardi. Oh, that's like Cardi? a reggae. That's a definitely reggae. Club. Yeah, like I would do like, you know, like a different, like a reggae vibe. Like Cardi is goaded. Like Cardi, not Cardi B. <laughs> Cardi, Cardinal. <laughs> the, the original, the original Cardi, bro. <laughs> That's a fact. He was what, are the, what are your thoughts on social media and its effect on hip hop and rappers? Okay, well, in Toronto, like, everybody's into this, like, gang, 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 banging stuff. And I get it. Like, that's where most of people, like, they get their streams from in, in the politics and everything. It's like politics, politics. That's what I see when I'm on so social media. And I mean, it is what it is in terms of how it affects hip hop. Like, Toronto hip hop is all politics, really. Like, people that are actually, like, the good artists that are not into the politics, they don't get the streams. They don't get listened to as much. I could say a lot of names, but I won't. But like, you know, there, there's a lot of talented people in Toronto that are in the hip hop scene. That I feel that they don't get the love or they don't get the, the attention that they deserve. People don't tap into it unless it has to do with drama. That's a fact. So I see speaking of that girl. Drama? No, I'm just saying. Speaking of that girl, I said he jumped on a social media app a few months ago and called out the male bias in the city. Could you go more in detail on why you felt like this and um, why you felt like this? What? I didn't remember what I said. I'd be ranting. Clubhouse. I believe it was a clubhouse. You're on clubhouse. And, I said you're, and you're basically saying that the, you know, the guys like what I've been saying a million and one times. This is the first time I'm talking on clubhouse. So don't mind me. I'm a local tipsy still. I'm in the studio. So <laughs> I love you already know. <laughs> Yeah, you mean so my my friend here he just he just tapped me in, but um yeah, the city doesn't support the ladies, like you know what I'm at saying? All, like these all. blogs, they don't support the gal them, like they support them on them because they're all in the polys and everything, but like when it comes to the ladies, they just kind of like rush us to the side, like or, or is it the pages that you guys want to post it? Post because that's what I was gonna say too. What Pardon, about what did like, you say? I said, is it just the pages that you want? to get posted no, on or not posted? Not necessarily no, it's the, not. No. no, it's not the pages. It's just like, in general, like when ladies mm -hmm. push the, like when we put out our music, we don't get the love as do, period. Like, that's just facts. We do not get the love, just get the love. True, true, like, true. we don't, like. Yo, you know yo, I mean? can I, yo, but yo, that's this is Liv talking. That yo, this is who? Cut you guys off. This is Liv speaking. 
Yo, if you're nice, the man will read it, the man will support you. That's the only thing I've noticed about the city, boy. Fuck these dick sucking blogs riding the ops, dick. We do this shit independent, nigga. Big horrible. Like, is he really on it? Way before Keep Six, we kept the six on it. But the guys get more clout and more. You know, oh yeah, they get they, 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 they don't take women the women seriously. They feel the women are not doing anything. And don't get me wrong, like I'm not saying the women are doing just as much as the men, but I mean it could it, it, uh, it could pick up a little bit. Like, but we as women, we have more things to deal with. We have kids, we have life, like we have real issues. Like men, we haven't like how many kids and it's still rapping. Like you know, what I'm saying women have more responsibilities and more things to take care of, and it's harder just in general for us to do the like be in the music business not to give us an excuse either not giving us excuses because there's no excuse mm -hmm. if you're trying to do this shit serious i got i got a lot of things that are holding me back and i still get it done so no excuses but it's you got men and female they're, they're different but at the same time it's a male dominated industry lots of these blogs Lots of people in the business are men. Hip hop is 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 male dominated run off of everything. So women do not get the I would say like they don't promote the women the way that they promote the men. If women come out like the, with hot pop and music, men don't stream it. It's like it's like who, who what would I say like how much men are playing Nicki Minaj like really like she has the barb she has like her kind of like genre like of people and like majority of her listeners are female i would i would think or would be female and like the gay community mm -hmm. right but like for females it's not really the men and all the men in toronto not really streaming the music it's like women supporting women and a one two man or maybe like lgbt like you know what i'm saying for the female music yeah. Unless female starts making more music that's more like male friendly, that like mans could like bump in their car, mm -hmm. like they just don't get up. Maybe if it's politics, they'll get a one two plays, but they don't support it. And then they want to say that we don't work as hard. Yeah, they say like they say that. Also. I feel like I'm confusing myself trying to explain it. No, they, 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 <laughs> they, that's a fact. They, they say it all the time, like. One, one thing I can say is that with the males, females were, how can I put this? Females in the game, from what I see from Toronto, because I support a lot of Toronto females in the city. And one thing I always say to the, like the people like Lola's or whatever the case may be around me or whatever, and I continue to say, it, I said, bro, at the end of the day, these niggas will never, ever, ever, ever support y'all until the day that the Americans put mm -hmm. the girls first. Yeah, yeah, I called this from uh, Kevin can play back the video. I called this like almost two years ago. And I said, the day that the females in, 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 um, in the States start to get hot and they're on every podcast, they're on everything is when niggas in Toronto and bloggers in Toronto males are going to start reaching out and saying, Hey, come be on my show. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? And it's like, yeah. to me, you females been working for years and years. Mm -hmm in years half of you guys should be further than where you, where you guys are now half of these males i say it all the time some of them they're nice but there's some females that come with real bars mm -hmm. a lot of you guys are are harder there's than so a lot many of females, you guys. They, but they, they don't they, they don't take it in like i feel like sometimes i'm rapping and like i'm making certain music and shit's just flying over people's head like are people really taking in what i'm saying like the bars i spit like i i put a lot of passion in what i do a lot of people even to this day think that like this is not a serious thing that i'm doing like this is a, this is real deal like i'm really doing this for keeps like this is this is what i'm trying to do as a career like this is not a little hobby little something i do on the side mm -hmm. like no I'm, I'm 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 trying to be up there with the big dogs like i'm trying to be up there with the cardi b's and the nicky's and the and the this and the that and i'm not ashamed to say that you know what i'm saying i ain't put all this money and hard work and what i'm doing for it not to pay off, you know what I'm saying? But some people are not in, in it as deep. Some people, you know, they just do it for fun. That's the fact. And, you know, I, mm -mm, yeah. 
like myself i just, I just do it's, it's, it's not this music it's shit is not it's not it's cheap bro it's an expensive it's hobby in yeah it's not it's a walk in the park. hobby it's really you, not a walk in the park a song you get it mixed and mastered you got to put money into promotions and marketing you got to do a music video by by all that and you spent how many thousands of dollars already you oh, know what i'm saying like and, and you ain't even getting one person to stream it yet and this is i already done spent 5k easy one record that's not even what marketing or nothing that's just me doing a music video going to the studio recording making sure it's mixed and mastered it's an expensive hustle to get the quality that I want. You know what I'm saying? Everything I do is top notch. I put a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. I'll, I'll re-record a song like three, four or five times. One song. Because I want it to be perfect. Every ad lib. Oh, I don't like it this way. Okay, I'm going to wrap it that way. That's how just how I work and how I do my stuff, you know? So I take a lot of passion in what I do. So I can't just go. I'm not a little Wayne. I'm not going to go record one time and perfect you know <laughs> not at that level yet but i will be one day <laughs> so i also see that you went and trademarked queen of the six i didn't wait before keep six we kept the six solid give a fuck who spit because i'm really vomiting and if a bitch want beef shoot off a bonnet so what are your yeah. thoughts on those who disagree with this move i don't give a fuck what anybody thinks that's my wave i created it i invented it nobody was on it until I made it. There was no such thing. I created it in my brain, in my mind. Queen of the six. That's my wave. Anybody has a problem with it, talk to the queen of the six. It's just, it's just, that's my wave. Before rap, it was my wave. Before I was rapping, queen of the six was my wave. When I've been on the dance scene, I got that. And I didn't give myself that name. That name was given to me in the States. They're like, oh, you're from the six. That's where Drake's from. You're the queen... Da, da, da. yeah oh that's a wave okay let me hug that boom brought it over here nobody was even on it now females are all of a sudden so popular people want to post the females in the blogs and say queen of the six queen of the, that's my wave it's been my wave anybody that knows me it was my wave before rap just saying i know i sound pissed right <laughs> no, no, this. no, if not, it's a, it's a question that everybody, you know, it's one of those things where people want to twist it around. It. And Sorry. it's one of those things where I continue to tell everybody, like the amount of interviews I say, I said, yo, there needs to be a battle. Just like at the end of the day, it's, it is what it is. Everybody's going to feel like they're the queen of the six. I'm not well, taking queen of the six. It's like, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just I'm, saying they're not, I'm not taking nothing away from your you and what you you put together but i'm just saying in general everybody and i'm not i'm not saying it's from you i'm saying it's from another artist which i don't okay. want to on okay here. i get what you're saying but what i'm saying is is that queen of the six if you hear chromas who is she she's the first lady no and can anybody be first lady in the hip-hop scene if a girl goes around and calls herself first lady you're not first lady. That's not your wave. That's not a wave. That's Chroma's wave. She came up with it. She calls herself the first lady. Nobody calls her the first lady. It's self-proclaimed. But you understand but, what I'm saying? No, I get what you're saying. But when it comes to especially first lady, certain things you have to have credentials that are behind it to back it up. So I see why. I see, no, no, I'm saying I'm not meaning in that you, sense. No, I'm, no, I'm just. I know, but this you is the way that a lot of arguing. <laughs> No, no, no. Sorry. I'm saying this is the way that Torontonians are thinking because I hear the shit. Yeah, this thinking. is what they're thinking in their head. They're thinking, yeah, earn it. This buddy, come up with your wave. Everybody has a wave. Chroma's first lady. Whoever the uh, who else has a wave? Uh, I could just think of Chroma's right now. My, my brain's fried, but she's like first lady. Now, whether you feel she's the first lady or not, that's her wave. Everybody's gonna say that. The blogs say that. Da, 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 da. That's yeah. right. Even me, I'm not going to go around and say I'm the first lady because I know that's her wave. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I'm I might I might feel like, nah, she's not no first lady. You know, her music is this. Her music is that. Whether I feel that or not, I'm gonna still say that's her wave. She's Toronto's first lady. That's what she's known for. She her chain says first lady. When you when I go around with my chain, back of my chain says Queen of the Six. Queen of the Six is a wave. I it, it's a brand. I trademarked it. It's my 
brand. Now, you don't have to feel that I'm the queen of the six. I'm going to prove it every time when I put out my music why I am the queen of the six. But let's not get into that. But yeah, you get what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. you don't have to feel that, but that's my way. That's all I, that's all I'm putting out there. You know what I'm saying? That's just my way. Listen, we get you. (laughs) Yeah, just people don't understand. No, no, I get it. And and the fact that you're explaining it, hopefully people will now understand the reason why. Yeah, like, everybody always wants to feel that or not. Like, if you read the comments and when you go in the comments, everyone always asks you, why? Why do you feel like? So now you're answering. This is the reason yeah. why. Oh, this I is my reason it. why. Because yeah. why? And, and and even after rap, why I continue to still be queen of the six? Because I'm the number one female rapper in all of Canada. There's 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 no debate. There's no, no argument on that. I'm number one streamed. Number one with all the number one in accolades. Number one in streaming in Canada right now. Currently, as I'm talking to you right now, I'm number one female rapper in Canada. Queen of the six. Gotcha, baby. <laughs> so, unlike, so unlike some of the other Toronto rappers, you have been you have traveled in other countries. Um, could you describe how those how, how those experiences were? Like, what's the difference between, you know, going over there, performing there and in performing, say, in front of your your own city? Um. Uh, I don't think I've ever performed in front of my own city doing um, Rolling Loud is going to be my first in the city. Um, I've done a couple like club events, but it's not like on a concert scale. Mm-hmm. Um, I've did like more like concert scale and like club appearances in the States more than I did um, here. But um, when you go like this goes for anybody, whether you're from Toronto, Atlanta, wherever, anytime you go out of your own city, they always show you more love. You always get more love when it's not in your city. Like, that's just a fact. Like, I always feel more comfortable when it's not in my city. Cause I'm like, oh, these are complete strangers. I'm going to perform. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like they're strangers, but it might be somebody I know from school in Toronto or this, like, you know, you're going to see people you possibly know if you're like, you know, in Toronto. Right. So I don't know. That's just how I feel like performing wise. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Does so that answer the question good. I don't know. No, no, you did. Cause you said you haven't performed really like on yeah. a concrete scale until just like until club time. stuff. Okay. So like, speaking about rolling loud, where were you in the, at that moment when you received either the phone call or like, you know, that I, I nearly yeah. shit my pants. I was like, is this, is this a fake uh, message? <laughs> cause they DM'd me on, uh, Instagram. That's how I got it. I, and I, no, actually, they sent me an email and they sent me a DM. But I, I, I got the news the same day I filmed Julie's Black uh, music video. That was the day they DM'd me, or no, that was the day I, I, I found, I seen the DM. But they, I think they sent it the day before. And I looked at my at my messages and it was like pending. And I'm like, who's this? Rolling loud. I click it and I'm like, can I speak to your manager? We would like to talk some business. I'm like, I'm like, all I, my eyes nearly went on my head. I'm like, no, no, no. I go back. Is this the real account? Oh shit, one million plus. Oh, this is a real account. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, all I. I'm like, I'm like, what would they be asking me to for? You know, like, I'm like, no, not for a concert because I'm like, there's no concert here, like, you know. But I'm like, maybe they want me to come to the states. It's like whatever, you know. Gave them the number, boom. They hit me. They said the, for rolling. I was freaking, <laughs> freaking girl, girl. I it took me like two weeks to get over it. I didn't care if I'm on the small stage or I'm in the corner rapping. I don't care where I'm rapping. I'm just like, I get to be on rolling loud. That means I'm going to be on the flyer. Wow, that's all I cared about. I was like, so I know moment you- ever in my freaking life. This is my first big concert ever. I, so I, I know you can't speak too much about it, but um, you're set. Have you already started to prepare for it? Um, I have. A, I, have I, I don't. Want, I don't want to ask you too much because I feel like I know a lot of people was probably gonna hope and pray for a couple legendary people to walk through. I ain't gonna <laughs> say names, but I don't want. I know ugh, a girl. So <laughs> a girl. <laughs> No, trust me. I really want to ask, but I know certain things you guys have to keep under wraps and you can't really say. Yeah, too. absolutely. So I get it. Um, 
So let's talk about outfits. Cause I know when it comes to outfits and stuff like that, especially when it comes to the females and, and stuff, you can't be going there looking like, just like a basic. It's no, not, a basic we, event. so I have you already, have you already, or have some stylists already reached out to you? Some, some, some hairstylists reach out to you. What have some people reached out? I to you? have, um, a stylist that's making my outfit, um, custom outfit. It's going to be very show shopping, show, like show stopping. Yeah. Show stopping. Um, you know, like from my music videos, from everything I do, like I'm going to come in, I'm turning heads. Like I'm coming in and that with the wow factor, you know what I'm saying? Like coming in with the bells and the whistles, honey, it's, it's <laughs> going to be fierce and whistles, bells and the whistles, honey, bells and the whistles, whatever. So I'll all sorts. <laughs> I, I cannot wait. Um, hopefully we get to we get to be a part of that as well for the media coverage. So when it when it when it came when it comes to working with artists and collaborating with artists, um, how do you feel the difference is the different vibe is when it is working with a male opposed to a female. Cause I know a lot of female artists may, may say, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to work with females because there's maybe a little bit more females think it's a competition or to you. It's like, you know, I don't care who I, I don't care if it's a male or female, but you know, which one do you find you vibe with a little bit more or. Um, I would say. If... I get along with everybody though. All... Nobody really has a problem with me. Like I get around, I get I get along, and I do business really well with people. I'm very professional and respectful, so I always think it always works out like as a good balance. Um, some of the relationships um, that I do are sometimes not in person as a collaboration. It has to be like over over the phone because they're in a different state. So then we just you know they record their verse, I record mine, but we still are like collective, like you know doing like conference calls and stuff to make sure everything's blessed on that um, type of relationship. But I don't have a preference of male or female, to be honest. I, I don't think, I think if I have to a man, I think, I think, I don't know. <laughs> no, I have a question. I know what you can't <laughs> males when, when it comes to producers, right. I'm working with producers. Sometimes what happens is, um, some producers may take advantage, try to take advantage of artists. Have you ever had an experience where you had to like shut shit down like early and be like, nah, nah, we ain't doing this. I'm, I'm not. Oh, I mean, like name, that. Yeah. Like, like the guys that are fresh right. or whatever. Yeah. Where they think like, okay, no, like. Yeah. You know, that, goes, that happens all the time. That just comes with the business. They'll think like, oh, you know, she's hot. You know, maybe I can, you know, I never had no perverted moment or nothing where man's tried to violate, but like, I definitely had the hollers here and there, you know, whether I have a boyfriend or not, they, at that time, they'll just, you know, try to slide in, try to, yo, let's do a little dinner one-on-one, -on -one. let me call you, oh, you look nice, you know, making advances, but it's okay. I feel like lots of guys, they get intimidated when they see me too, because I'm, I got that energy, you know, they got to think twice before they do it. <laughs> Like I will curse your ass out if you come. If yeah, you come. like what do you like? Watch where you step in. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say about some people who believe that Toronto won't behave during the weekend? Of oh my gosh, it's not. I don't even know. Like the blogs are not helping because the blogs are promoting it, saying so, oh there's there's gonna be trouble, and then they put like all this in the blogs and like, and then was it Mula? He said there'll be no day two or three. <laughs> that's a fact no oh i just I, no, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna sit here in front like i was one of those people that were just like yo they need to behave themselves i said i, I hope said, so. i said this is a trial run Everybody from has to be july, they need to in, you know from, from july to august this is how count this is how toronto work from july to august they're going to give you guys a trial run the amount of bodies that drop is going to determine if that's going to go forward because at the end of the day you guys need to know that this is a this is a multi-million dollar show that at the, in the states it's sold out like it's crazy like people yeah. it's and there's disgusting. bigger beefs out there too like in these other cities so i'm just hoping like toronto can cooperate and everybody could just be like peace love harmony like which never happens you know you know, you know, you know just thing. act cordial and just i hope they i hope they hire enough security to keep certain people separated like real talk like, that's what's gonna save the security 
they're going to sure there's like you know no but the difference is between america and here is that it's toronto only the uh -huh. artists the artists that are there that are that have beef in america are from different cities so from miami atlanta new york we have, we have american like artists like coming but there's a lot of toronto there's like yeah but i'm saying like the toronto artists that that everyone thinks like for rolling loud for the issues and the the they're all from the same the same city which is toronto yeah exactly at least, yeah, at least in america they're from different oh i, I feel you, you understand I feel what i mean you. they're from new york they're you. from baltimore they're yeah, from no, chicago toronto so they over here necessarily uh, you understand what I mean? So at the end of it, they can go back to their city without no problem. And they tried. They honestly, like, they're. In, I don't think they're too familiar with the politics. But I, um, from my end, like, they they tried doing the best they can to, to make, like, the people that they chose to, to be, like, people that they can get along. But... <laughs> That's a fact. Like, I just hope and pray. I'm happy they're just putting, giving people opportunity and, 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 you know, giving us a platform to do something like this is amazing, you know, That's for artists that are not necessarily winning, like, like Drake's not, not necessarily going to be like, yo, Paris, come, come perform for me. I mean, that'd be great, but I it's not like, you know, that was a situation where Drake himself was putting on artists that are upcoming. He could have, he could have done that. He could have did this, gave, gave artists an opportunity before Rolling Loud did, you know, he's been having OVO Fest for every year, like the opening okay. acts like he could put and put more upcoming Toronto artists that are on, on the rise, you know, that's a, that's a fact. Sorry. I always thought I'm like, why didn't Drake do this? He should have did it first, man. Yeah. Sorry. Six okay. God. That's a myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is true, which I say all the time, you know, he could, he could, he, he can do a little, a little, um, a little extra. I mean, he does a, a lot, but he too. does do a lot. And, you know, there, there are a lot of artists that when OVO Fest was first, when it first happened that he could have put up and, you know, a little one, a little, you know, 10 minute segment while yeah, you're you know? in the back wouldn't hurt. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, instead yeah, of having one, two that are buzzing, music, you know? Yeah. Instead of having the DJ play music during that, the, that time, you could have had, you know, a couple of Toronto artists that you knew, like you said, was buzzing. Mm -hmm. Give them a little platform, a little opportunity. Absolutely. Um, so what can people expect in the coming future in terms of music for you? Well, definitely um, they can continue to see consistency. I'm not going to be like, you know, a one hit wonder and drop one and then disappear and come back next year and drop music. I'm always consistent. Um, I've been releasing like every like two months or so I release new records, new music, and I'm definitely have lots of music in the vault that I have not released. That is super fire. So I already have from, from now till next end of next year is already, I already have enough music until end of next year to like, like, planned basically for everyone so this is just like the warm-up year um kind of like introduction to who like paris richards is even though i've been doing music for quite some time it's just now that i'm trying to do it more like like mainstream you know what i'm saying so it's like just putting the you know the the, the foot on the pedal and just going all in like i'm literally going all in with this music especially this year and next year that's good so you know before we go people gotta know are you taking baby girl <laughs> for the look like that is like they be hitting me <laughs> i'm single like a dollar bill honey single <laughs> like a man, girl. and is that by choice <laughs> as when you wanted to um focus on your career or was it more you just got out of a relationship and you know right now niggas ain't it niggas ain't shit well yeah it's um just right now it's just i just decided i'm gonna be focusing on myself focusing on my music um right now i can't i can't have any distractions i gotta just focus on the prize and the prize is the music <laughs> that's amazing so you said you're a mom correct yeah so how is it ba balancing being a mom your music and also like running a household and all of that because i know you said you deal with a lot that a lot of people don't know, but how is yeah, it for those people a lot. and trying to balance? What is your advice to somebody like that? Um, just 
always put actions to your goals. Always put actions because sometimes, you know, like I could, I could, I could say, I want to, you know, I want to do music. I want to do this. I want to do that. But without any action, I'm not going to achieve it. It'll just be a thought or a memory or a dream or whatever. Right. But Mm -hmm. sometimes if you take out a little time for yourself, doesn't matter how busy you are, even if you got kids, they could be watching TV. You could be writing, writing a song, you know, you figure it out. You multitask when they go to bed. Okay. This is my time. I'm going to go write a song now. I'm going to go, Oh, so-and-so is going to be, I'm going to go record over here at this studio. Like no matter what, don't make excuses. If you're going to do something to take the action and do it. Like a lot of people don't know I'm on HA right now. I'm on housey. I had a little trouble with the law over a year ago and I've been on housey and I've pushed out all this music on house you know excuses you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. ha you know what i'm saying yeah one more clap back yeah big up his back. <laughs> 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 sorry i had to throw that out there like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh no, seriously like you're a real nba young boy out here like really doing your thing you see how everything i everything i rap is no, real <laughs> no but i'm saying and everything and everything that and he's like one of the, if you go on um, YouTube, his shit is the most streamed NBA. And he's doing videos out of the, his garage with the ankle monitor, everything like, awesome. he's and he's make and he, he can't leave nowhere but his crib. No excuses. That's what I'm trying to say. Fam. Like, what's my excuse? What's anyone uh-huh. else's excuse? That's on the road. Like if I have to go up my shirty and go shoot this music video, I'm doing that. And that's what I've been doing for over a year. A lot of people don't know that. I gotta go do a show. Surety, let's go. Do what you gotta do. No excuses. No excuses. After this experience for myself, it's a learning experience myself. I know that once, once I'm off this, buddy, I'm sorry for everybody. Cause I'm gonna be outside. Outside, outside. outside. In, the States. <laughs> In the States, outside. Not even Canadian soil outside. So. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to do whatever little damage I can from the comfort of my home and whatever and you know, see where it goes from there. Sick. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Me, me, can't, me can't say nothing about that. Um, <laughs> there's lots more questions that I want to ask, but I, I, I feel like after Rolling Loud um, and we meet up again, I believe um, those questions, because I feel like if I ask you these questions, you won't be able to answer them because it's like, I need, like, I want to see that performance. Like, I need to see that performance. Okay. Like, I'm the, like, no, because I'm like one of those blogger girls that are just very, I'm, I, I, as you can see, I have no filter. You understand? <laughs> what I mean? So I'm like one of those people, especially when it comes to rap and stuff like that. Like I said, I just, fuck around with it it's it's a hard it's like i don't take it as serious as y'all do and i praise you guys every single day when people say oh brooklyn no not like these females that take it very seriously i i applaud you guys but one thing i always say when it comes to females the look is whatever we you guys can look amazing gorgeous whatever you can articulate a little bit whatever but the bars because these these dudes are out here our bars always has to be top. Like, that's the way I feel. So when I'm yeah. critiquing women, it's not that, oh, Brooklyn's hating. It's that I know you could do better because I probably heard a song that, yo, when I heard it, I had to play that shit three times. I had to rewind that shit. Yo, dog, did you hear this bar? I don't yeah. think it So when you have expectations of certain people, I look at it like, bro, I know she can do better. My guy, the, the track that you're telling me about, there's 10 other tracks that are way better than that one track that you're talking about. So it's not that I'm hating. It's just that when it comes to especially females in the game, whether you're a rapper or you're a singer, I put you guys at such a high bar that if they were to put you guys up against another dude, I want you guys to be able to knock them niggas out the park. Like, I don't want niggas playing niggas songs anymore i want that for right. y'all when you guys are away. rolling around you pull up next to somebody and they're not playing hold on oh, one second they're not they're not playing you know what i mean they're playing yeah. you guys music that's what i want to hear so that being said what can we expect um 
when it comes sorry i asked that question so my auntie got me all see this is what they talk about jamaicans <laughs> jamaicans that's okay. um that's so okay before you go let everybody know where they can follow you for those who don't know which i don't understand why you guys wouldn't know but just let everybody know because we're going to make sure we tag it at the bottom mm -hmm. um and stuff like that where they can stream your stuff on spotify all of that let that be known and um yeah okay so um yeah if um anybody's trying to follow me on instagram my instagram is paris underscore richards same for my twitter um same if you're want to check out my music on youtube my youtube channel should be i think i'm um, just type in paris richards um and yeah spotify same thing paris richards <laughs> okay and last question well is there anything else that you would what is one thing you want people to take away from this interview, like when they see it, what is one thing you want them to remember about Paris? That's one thing I want. That Paris, no matter what, I either want to, I learn, but I will never lose. No matter the circumstances, I'm still going to be doing my music. I'm not going to let nobody or nothing stop me from my goals that I want to achieve, period. Yes. Period, so. <laughs> so last but not least, I'm gonna ask you. So Mary Kill. What? Smash. Yes. Well, this is a Mary Kill Smash. Mary Kill Smash, girl. Mary Kill Smash. Okay. All right, you ready? So the first one that I'm gonna put in there is uh, drum roll, please. Trey Songs. <laughs> okay, you gotta impress me better than Michael that. B. Jordan, Michael B. <laughs> Jordan. And Snoop Dogg. Mary Kill and what? Mary Kill Smash. Oh, Smash. Hmm. Mary Kill Smash. Okay. Who would I smash? No, who would I kill? <laughs> Fucking Trey Songs, yo. <laughs> I'll kill Trey Songs. Um, I'll marry Snoop Dogg. Ah. And I'll, I'll Mary, oh yeah, and I'm gonna smash Michael B for sure. For okay. sure. For sure. You know, he'll put a ring on it if it's that good. He'll definitely put a ring on it. Yeah, he's you like, know. But Snoop Dogg, yo, I'm gonna marry him because he's he he has the guap up still. And he has the lyrics. And he, oh yeah, he's, he's old a vibe. Dude. Uncle Snoopy's a vibe. Uncle Snoop is vibes. <laughs> he's a vibe. Who wouldn't want Uncle Snoop? What? I love him. Shout out Snoop Dogg. We follow each other. Instagram. Exactly. Shout out to Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Shout out to you, Paris. Continue Thank doing you. what I you appreciate you. Stay beautiful. Stay Thank awesome. Thank you for the interview. I appreciate yeah. you. And, you know, like, it's a good thing. We need more blogs like that in the city, like, featuring artists like us on the come up. Yes. And I appreciate everything about you. Um, Thank you. You're queen. Um, you know what I mean? You're beautiful. You're intelligent. You're motivated. And you're dominating. So, you know, like they say all the time, like Nikki says all the time, numbers don't lie. You feel me? Anybody can say whatever the fuck they want to say. But at exactly. The end, That's like the attitude. Just, like, you know, a lot of receipts. you came with the receipts and there's nothing that. You know, I didn't have a rebuttal. You, I'm telling you, I'm one of those people that have rebuttals. You came with your receipts. And the fact that we already knew what the receipts were, we we did our research too. Oh, everything we already you. knew. So it's one of those things, like like I said, people may say, oh, Brooklyn is like, I am not. I'm a congratulator. And every single time that I try, I've been wanting to get females together to do a bunch of stuff. Hopefully we can talk on the, on the, on the end back end. But like I said, I want you to do amazing. Please, 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 mm -hmm. please, please kill it at rolling loud. I, Thank you're you. always Jesus Christ. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that, that's the energy I want. When you understand what I mean? It's like one of those when you see, like, I hope that's you what just know I hope. Panty, okay? Brown like panty. I hope and pray that we're part of the media so I can, I want, I want one. Like you feel me, but yeah, oh keep being amazing, keep being creative. And mm -hmm. like I said, you hooking up with the legends in the game just only proves that, you know, you've been in the game, you've been doing your thing and, you know, legends like that just don't hop on tracks with any and anybody. You feel me? Yes. So I salute you. And the fact that you're able to roll with the, some of the big dogs, which is some of the dudes in the city, you know, a lot of blogs have you as number one out here. You feel me? So kudos to you and you. can't wait to have another interview with you. You stay amazing.
Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Worldwide TV, man. Big up yourself, man. Straight from the original Dan Dada. Yeah. And who don't like we? Because suck your mother. Be your girl and drink the blood clot, dirty water. I am. <laughs>